everyone, welcome to another episode of the Coach Gerald Lammy podcast. I will be bringing you content with some of the best sport personalities around the world and sharing a journey with the listeners and inspiring the next generation. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce my special guest for today, Kudus Oyenoga. Welcome, Kudus. Uh, thanks for having me, Gerald, man. Appreciate it. Anytime, anytime, anytime. So just to give the, the listeners a, a background of your upbringing, what, what was it like? Where did you, where did you grow up? You know, I had, a, I had a really good upbringing like, in terms of like, I had a mum and a dad, brother and sister, I had a good family unit. Um, and obviously, I had two parents who worked hard every day, um, to provide them food for us. Um, and old, my brother, obviously, you know my brother, he was a good goalkeeper, so obviously we played football when we was younger and I had two sisters. So I had a good upbringing. Best in Haringey. Best in Haringey, yeah? If you don't know, Adi Yenigar, best in Haringey. <laughs> He wasn't a bad goalkeeper, to be fair. He didn't save yeah, my, he was good. Couldn't save my shots, but you know, Ade was, Ade, Ade, <laughs> if Ade, I'll, I'll say if Ade was a bit taller, he would have been a good yeah. goalkeeper. He, he, yeah, he would have got sure. But it was just the, the height difference at the time when he was younger. He wasn't as yeah, tall. Yeah. And the model of goalkeepers back in the days, you had to be tall, six foot. Yeah, you know? Now, yeah. If, Ade, if Ade come through now, Ade will easily get scouted because Ade was good with his feet. That's what I was going to just say. I was going to say, at that time, there's not many goalkeepers that can play with their feet, but Adi was always one that could play with his feet. Boy. But like he said, it was just, it was the hype thing that kind of, you know, held him back a little bit. But he's at Arsenal, Arsenal fan TV now, right? He's, yeah, he's yeah, 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 he's playing with them now, man. He's currently injured at the moment. Danny's knee in it, so he'll be out for a while. Okay, okay. 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 But, you know, he's been, doing, he's been doing well. So, yeah, my upbringing was good, man. Obviously, I grew up in Hackney. Yeah. Obviously, mm-hmm. obviously, I, obviously, again, my family didn't have a lot of money at that time when we was younger. But, you know, we made it work. I had what I had. And, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I went to school at Harrington Hill, primary school. Mm-hmm. So, I grew up in Captain, so Springfield area. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, man, I had, a, I had a good upbringing. I can't complain, obviously. My mum and dad looked after me. Do you know what I mean? I didn't get anything on demand. We still had to hustle. And, do you know what I mean? Times were hard. But, do you, know, you know how it is. We just we, we, we got through it, man. We got through it. No, no, for sure. So obviously, I, I know, I know, I know, I know you, and I know your family very well. Growing up, went to school with your brother. We both, well, you came to the school as well. Um, so, but just for people to understand, obviously, what Clapton and and Hackney was or still is really at this present moment. Like, was there any temptation? Was there any sort of distractions when you was growing up? Obviously, you always hear obviously. Like, we, we grew up in Clapton. Me and my brother, we grew up in Clapton. So Clapton was notorious. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had you see, people getting stabbed, killed, mm-hmm. um, drugs. We had everything in it. But obviously, where we lived, it was like, it's, in a way, it's like a community at the time. We had that cage where everybody mm-hmm. played in the cage. Obviously, when I was younger, me and my, obviously, you know, you know Adam, but me and Adam, mm-hmm. we were just known as the ballers, in it? So we'd always play with the mm-hmm. older boys. We just bang ball. So for me, obviously, I thank God for football because if I didn't have football, I think so. Where would I have been? I would have. You, you think, oh, where majority of my friends when I was growing mm. up, I was dead or in jail or no, mm. no, not, not all of them. But do you know what I mean? Like, mm. the people who knew when we was younger, have a jail, dead or some of them are doing good things with their lives. So I still think I don't think I would have went in the, that route. But obviously, there's more temptation to go to go there if I didn't have football. Mm. But luckily enough, I had football. I had two good parents who raised me well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They, 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 try, they try to show me the way, and you know what? In a way, f- football was my escape. Because when I was mm. a young, when I was younger, I was a bit cheeky. I had a bit. You was. Like, you definitely was. Like, you definitely like, was. I'll tell you that. Do you know what I mean? I was, well, I was a bit cheeky. I was a bit yeah. boisterous. You know what I mean? So to be fair, football kind of saved me in a way because mm. where I grew up and where I am now, it's like light and day. Obviously, having children now, I'm like raw. My kids have, I'm like, raw. my kids don't know the struggle which I went through. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I remember going mm-hmm. to school with, with high-tech crepes, you feel me? Like, I had mm-hmm. purple high techs my mum bought me. Do you know what I mean? And like, now, mm-hmm. I, was say, I can't buy, I can't, I can't buy any trade in the world, but do you know what I mean? I, I mm-hmm. remember the struggle, do you feel me? So, from mm-hmm. that to where I am now, do you know what I mean? Thank God, man. Can't, I can't complain, man. Thank God. No, I'm proud of you, I'm proud of you. But, so you said football, football um, saved your life. Talk us, talk us about your football journey. Yeah, you know, obviously, as a youngster, I played for like Parkview Rangers and Springfield. Also, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. So, yeah. so Springfield was like our local boys club. That was our mm-hmm. like safe haven. It'd be school, home, get changed, Springfield boys mm-hmm. club, or it would be out in the cage playing football. So, to me, that that was my life. Literally, I used to 
finished school. Me and Adam used to go to school, my boy Junior as well, go to school. We used to um, do our thing in school, misbehave in school, play football in school, come home straight, mm. take our clothes off, put on our outside clothes, we're in the cage, oh, God, spin for boys club. That's what we done every day. That was our lives, <laughs> literally. Mm. Every day, a weekend football, 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 football. Obviously, we've done a bit of mischief there and again, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mischief. But that was my life, man. Obviously, I was at like, yeah. for Boys Club as a youngster. That was my boys club every week. And then, obviously, mm-hmm. on the weekend, I was Rangers. So, obviously, that was like my, that was like my, that was my local team where I met boys from different mm-hmm. areas, like Tottenham, Finsbury Park. Obviously, they were, they were Tottenham-based. Obviously, I'm a Hackney, but they were Tottenham-based. Mm-hmm. But Adam's mum used to take me football all the time. So, so love for Adam's mum and Adam's dad because... They looked after me, man. They were like my my mum and my dad in their sense. Because my mum and dad didn't really follow me too much football. Mm-hmm. Had mm-hmm. kid, but Adam's mum and dad, they like they took me in. So they used to take me everywhere. Mm-hmm. They used to take me football. So yeah, man. So I was like part of the Rangers from like what under on the on the sevens on the eights. I was just carrying mm-hmm. on playing from there, man. From young, yeah, I remember. you score goals. We used to score a lot of goals. Our team was notorious, man. We had we had too many players. Our team was, was elite. I don't think you could have beaten our art age group though at that time. Art age group was elite, man. I don't know. You was, you was, you was. Yeah, yeah, everybody, man. <laughs> yeah, you was, you was. So after, after you've obviously you've you've gone through like the youth ranks in the local local grassroots football. Where where did you move on from there? You know what? I actually got scattered by Chelsea. So social, mm-hmm. we had we um, me and my boy called Bob. You know Bob Kurobi. He got scattered for yeah. Chelsea. Um, so we both got scattered for Chelsea and. Bob got in, and I think with me, they wanted to see me a bit more. Um, and obviously, Tottenham come in. I said, look, we take you on trial. So it was funny enough, because I went to Tottenham on trial, and we played Chelsea mm. in my trial, and I scored two goals against Chelsea that day. So it was weird, mm. because Chelsea didn't want to sign me the next day, but I ended up signing to Tottenham. <laughs> and mm. yeah, yeah. So under 10 to sign to Tottenham, under 10 to under 11 signed to Tottenham. And boom, from there, I was at Tottenham from, for like nine years. Left at 19 after having a one-year pro then, 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 then left, man. So, yeah, uh, man. yeah I, I remember. I remember when you did you did go there. But what t- talk us about what was your main attributes that actually got you signed. What do you think that was? You know what? I was strong, powerful. And you know what? Mm-hmm. I could dribble as well, man. Like, it brought my feet. Mm-hmm. I, could, I could run past like three, four players. Bang, go. And I think that was... Mm-hmm. That set me aside. I, at a young age, I scored a lot of good goals. I scored a lot of goals. Mm-hmm. Striker, see, in our area, in our time, do you know what I mean, we part of your Rangers, we, we scored 30, 40 goals a season, easy. Mm-hmm. Like, we didn't score, we didn't win. Do you know what I mean? Something would be wrong. So I say, in terms of that, I say goal scoring wise, I was, mm-hmm. yeah, my age group, my area. Good, hello, but in terms of in terms of your 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 work rate as well, did you have to work hard to to get to that level? Yeah, because I think I had it natural. I think a bit of me was natural because I could do things with the ball, like chop, boom, boom, bang, go. Mm. I had, mm. you had that, I think you also need that natural ability, that natural mm. ability. But I, which I had, I had natural ability, which was good. And I mm. think that I, set me aside. I had that natural ability where I could, I could score goals, and that was something which I always done when I was when I was young. Mm. So, in terms of coaches, who, who had the biggest impact in your career? You know what? I would say my youth team, my academy manager at Tottenham, um, he's just got the job mm. at, at England now, and John McDermott. Okay. He was like, he was really okay. good, you know, because he was more mental. He got into your mind, ment- which made you think, can I play better? Can I do more? What more do I need to do? Does that make sense? He got into your actual mind, which I thought was good. And you know, he's a funny guy as well. Like, he had a good personality, so... You could rub off one mm. of them. It was weird. I used to walk past his office and he used to give you that look, walking past the mm. office. Oh, what's he thinking now? And he'd know when to make you play better. Like, I remember mm. times where, I remember I remember a good time where, um, what was it? I played terrible. And you know what? He just got into me. I was like, oh my gosh, how can you get into me like that? But the mm. reaction I had after he got into me was, boom, I come out, boom. Played amazing in the second half. Do you know what I mean? So just things like that. He mm. knew when to play buttons and he knew when you was low. He's he's going for a low patch right now. Let me just, let me leave him. So I'll say John McDermott. Mm. Alex was, was was amazing as well. But in terms of like pro football and obviously I'd say Jim Duffy at, at Greenock Morton. I think he was a really good manager. Good man manager. Okay. Um good man manager. Um good with all the players. 
um, he could lose his, he could lose him, he could lose his. Obviously, I can't swear. Let me not swear. He could mm-hmm. lose it, but, but but yeah, he was a good manager, man. Like one, I'll say he's yeah. the best manager. He's made me play a bit free, and I enjoyed my football under him. So you you was up to the age of what sixteen? You said you was at Tottenham. Yes, I'm not. So I was, so I was at Tottenham for 2019. So Simon was at oh, 10 to 19. Years, 19 yeah. So I was a two-year scholar, then obviously pro. Then I was at 19. Yeah. Um, then 20, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020. then I went from Tottenham. When I left Tottenham, I went to... You know what? This is what I was going to say. I left Tottenham and I went had a trial at Leeds and Cardiff mm-hmm. at the time. And they offered me a deal because they'd done that. You know, under 23s... Mm-hmm. You know, under twenty three league at the time I left Spurs, yeah. they were making it under twenty three league. And mm-hmm. do you know what? I, I, I ended up going to trial with them two clubs, which was okay. And they both said, "Yeah, they'll, they'll take me," but they were going to take me on a deal which wasn't financially good for me because okay. I was at a pro at mm-hmm. them. So leaving Spurs as a pro to go to Cardiff or Leeds, they wanted me to be like the third year squad type thing, and I was going to be on oh, okay. what I was on when I was a pro at Spurs. So I took the route. I took them on leave. I went Hazing Eden. They offered me a good deal for non-league football. I thought, you know what, I'm going to be playing against men. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to take it. And I just went there. I just went non-league for a season. Um, I scored, I think I scored like 21 goals that season. I think I scored like 17, 18 yeah. in the league. The Cups. And mm. I, I moved straight to Dundee United. Like, I had a, like a trial game at, in, mm. in Birmingham. Then bang, went up to Dundee United, trained there for like two days. And me and my, me and my best friend, me and one of my best friends, Callum Butcher, we signed to Dundee United. I signed a three-year deal out there. And from Dundee United, I went to... From Dundee United, I had a few long spells and um, Bourne Woods. I went Tide and Beef. Um, mm-hmm. I, um, I went, yeah, I went Tide and Beef. I went... Then when I left Dundee United, I went to Hartlepool. Um, Hartlepool United. And after Hartlepool United... Well, I've travelled a lot, boy. But after Hartlepool... Mm, yeah, he's, he's got a long CV at the moment. <laughs> I, went back to, I went to back up to Scotland, Green and Morton, then... Oh, Green and Morton, I went back to non-league, man, because obviously at the time when I left Green and Morton, I had the kids at the time at a crucial age, and I thought, you know mm. what, mm, I must I should carry on doing the travelling, travelling around pro. Mm. So I got offered a deal at Chelmsford United, which is a good deal, Essex based, and I came back home. Then from there at Chelmsford and Dartford, and now I've been at Margate and Leverhead this season. So, so yeah, man, it's okay. been a, it's been an eventful it's been journey. A journey. Loads of clubs, but do you know what I mean, loads of lessons, man, loads, loads of lessons. Mm. For sure. So, obviously, you you're playing for one of the biggest clubs, arguably in the world, like for for Tottenham. Um, how how difficult was it to go to like Hayes and Yedin at that time? Because it's easy to to get stuck in that system. Yeah. But obviously, like you said, you went Hayes and Yedin, you scored goals, and you went to Dundee United. So, how difficult was it at that time? You know what? I think maybe I should have listened to a few of my coaches before that because when I was a f- my first year pro, I went to. I went to Bury on Loan in mm. League One, and I made a few appearances there. Came back for a month, and then I went to St Johnson for like three months at the end, towards the end of the season before I left Spurs at the end of the season. And before that, I should have went to. I, I got told to go to another club, so I got told to go to. Mm. to I got told to go to Hayes and when they were in the Conference Prem. When I was okay. at Spurs, told me to do that. But I was like, Nah, 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 it's too low. I'm not going to do it. But in hindsight, I wish I did do that, if that made sense. Mm. Because mm. if I would have done that, I think maybe I would have been there a bit longer and I would have done what they'd done, I think. Whereas I didn't do what they'd done, I went on loan to other clubs and they weren't right. Mm. I went to Berry, who were struggling in League One and they weren't they were playing football the way I played football. Do you know what I mean? So imagine coming from youth team and when you go to a different set of, it's a different... Football league, non-league, is different to academy and youth team it's totally different mm. ball game. I used to passing the ball feet running behind I remember my first game for Berry. the manager was like you're coming to feet too much running behind I got subbed out 45 minutes because I kept on coming to feet but obviously at, at Spurs <laughs> you from reserve team we came to feet we looked to play mm. he didn't want me to do that he wanted me to run it behind run run and I was like mm. so when I came out from that long spot I was like raw you know what maybe I should have went to Hayes and because Hayes and Yenny they were in the prem at the time it would have been okay. easy for me I would have probably scored a bit more goals and been more confident rather than being chucked in the deep in the league one where it was just boom, boom. The game was mm. too fast. Oh my gosh. So I'd say that thinking in hindsight, obviously, sometimes you've got to like just, but then, but then again, obviously, I don't regret anything and, and I don't regret yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's what it is. So, 
So, so yeah, I'll, did you, I'll play that. Did you, did you have any pressures to make it as a footballer? Did I have any, pardon me? Pressures, pressures. You know what? Did you I feel like pressure? You, 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 your mom, your dad, your brother and sister, but you know, I didn't, they didn't put no pressure on me where I had to make it, do you know what I mean? But I wanted to, mm. do you know what I mean? I wanted to make it, do you know what I mean? It, you know me from when I was young. I had that hunger in my belly mm-hmm. from when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I want to play this game. Sure. And you know what? And you, you know what? If I would have, if I would have went, went back in time, I said, everything in life I've done, you know what? I made my, I played in the league. I played in, the league. I played mm-hmm. in Scotland. I played in Qatar. I had a stint in, in, in Qatar before I left Spurs. Mm-hmm. I went out of Qatar and I've travelled the world. I've travelled the world with mm-hmm. football. I mean, I scored in the FA Cup. I scored in the, in the, in, in the league. You know what I mean, I can't, do you know what I mean, if you told me beforehand, I'd do all of this stuff. I would, I would have bit my hand off. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I've done. I've done the dream. I've always dreamed to be. Mm-hmm. Pro- do you know what I mean? It, it, I, I'm blessed, man. I'm, I'm I'm blessed. No, for sure, for sure. And like you said, your journey. You've you've got a wealth of experience and journey. And and any young players that are coming through the game, oh, that, that you know, that have been in the same position as you, I'm sure they can they can listen to this and 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 you know take a lot of information from this because like you said you, you've been literally a lot of places yeah, so what would you say is your, your best time in football you know what I say my best time in football was probably at Greenock Morton in Scotland um, and when I okay. left Hartlepool United I was like what am I going to do and I thought you know I love Scotland Scotland's a lovely place to live I went back up to Scotland and I went to Greenock Morton they were in the Scottish Championship so that, that's a uh, and that was my best mm. that, was, that was my best season semi-finals of Scottish Cup um, we got there good run um, I scored loads of goals. I scored, yeah, I scored like six, seven goals that year. Mm-hmm. We, 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 it was just good, man. Like the manager was cool. The, the boys were good. The banter was good. Mm-hmm. Um, I played a bit more my my regular position. Like it, mm-hmm. it, it, it was good, man. I, I'll say that was probably my best my best football season I, I, I had. And maybe Cardiff beef when I was on that like Cardiff beef. To be fair, I was good and good. I, I met one of my best mm-hmm. one of my best friends. Um, Nathaniel Wedderburn at that club, and you know we've we're, we're brothers till then. So I was, I, mm. I, I, I was agreed more, and that was a good good year where I really enjoyed football. Okay, would you say you've learned a lot of like life lessons through football? Oh, a lot of life lessons through football. I think. Yeah. What, what would you say? Me, I think was molding me as a character and molding me as a man. Mm. Again, like I've travelled the world. I've obviously. Even going to Qatar, so like when I went to Qatar, mm-hmm. because you got respect in people's cultures and the way they do things in terms of mm. having that bit of attitude when you're younger with managers, and then realizing you know what I've got to be the first one out to get changed because that might make a difference, or I've got to make sure that I'm doing all my prehab stuff beforehand. I've got to make sure I'm doing my issues. So it pulls you as a man, to be fair, to make you do more if that makes it if that if that makes sense. Mm. And what would you say was like your lowest point at football? What was your hardest time? I'll say my, I'll say my hardest time at football. I think at every time you have a hard time. I, listen, the amount of times I've literally wanted to retire from football, yeah, because I've had a bad game or done something wrong, or I, um, I was at Heart Liverpool and I gave away a goal, a pass ball back to their striker to run on and school and I remember going home that day and I was in bits man I was like mm. man. I, I was really low that day but you know what a month later I went on a great run <laughs> and started playing well so what, I, I, what do you, I, but what do you do what do you do so, in them times when you're the lowest what do you what do you look at or what, what, what inspiration or who do you call or what's your listen, tough times don't last tough people do and never mm. ever keep you high Never ever be too low. Mm. It's, it's, it's odd. I, honestly, the amount of times when I felt lower on ball on football, I swear to you, in a month's time, something good happens. Mm. Or like, the next game, so you can't be too low. If we, with this football team, you can't be low. You can't be low because something else can mm. happen. You know, on the score the other day, the amount of times I've I've been so upset about how I've played or what I've done, I've given away a goal, and the next day I bang in a goal. <laughs> You're like, huh? Mm. I don't do that. Last week I was feeling yeah, like yeah. I always say take things with a pinch of salt with football. Do you know what I mean? Don't don't be too hard on yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like it is what it is. Mm. We move. We move. Do you know what I mean? That's the motto. We, we actually move. Do you know what I mean? You're not mm. going to start in sure. position. You got to move on. And you, mm. you, you, you mm. got to do better, and you got to do more. 
Mm, for sure. So you've you've obviously you've been you've been to a few clubs. Who would you say is the best player you've ever played with? I say if, best player I've I played. With, I remember when I, was, I think I was fourteen, fifteen, and I made my reserve team debut for Spurs, and mm. I played with Adel Tarrap that day. And he was unbelievable. He's okay, the best yeah, player yeah. I've ever, ever played with. Like he was unbelievable. Mm. Like he, he he could do anything. He could do anything. Okay. With I would say today, like, I know I ain't ever seen physically seen Messi and Ronaldo, but the physical yeah. person I've ever seen live, Adel mm. Tarrap. He was he was a oh, magician. Okay. I would say Paul and Pocky was brilliant as well. Like, used yeah, to technically. Yeah, technically. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was a wizard, man. He could do the chop he had. Oh, he had he had this chop where he'd just yeah. roll his foot. He'd sell you literally. Boom. Yeah, Paul, I say Paul yeah. and Pocky was, he, he, he was elite, man. He was a good player as well. Yeah, and no, it's good to see that them guys are still still playing, yeah, you know, still. playing at a, a good level. A good, very good level, man. No, no, so, yeah, so, yeah, I'll say I delved to rap, then obviously Paul and Pocky would say, yeah. to, like, my age group here. yeah he was and, he was and who's the toughest you've ever come against you know what I was thinking about that who's the toughest person but yeah. you know who I would say I'll say Sam Cox you know yeah he's a rat Sam Cox I need yeah, to yeah. the guy's a rat man if you put Sam yeah. Cox <laughs> you've got to on him and he always used to injure me in training Sam Cox always used to injure me this guy will tackle you or just injure you yeah. start your toe I'll say Sam Cox because he's a tough guy I remember he had yeah. a tournament we had a tournament in Mexico and his role was to man mark this guy. I don't know if it was Mexico, but it was, it was a tour abroad with Spurs. Mm. And his role was to mark this player. This player had that, he dominated the whole tournament. I dominated him, the, the whole tournament. Man just said to Coxie, you have to stick on this guy. Yeah. I felt sorry for that guy, you know. We won the game, by the way. We got through. We, we've gone through the next round. Because Coxie marked him the whole game, he didn't give no change. I think this guy had like loads of goals, assists in the tournament. Yeah. Cox didn't give him nothing. He had nothing. So yeah, I say Coxie. If you put Coxie yeah. on top, Coxie stand up. That guy is not. He's not doing nothing. Because all right. So, so no, I did definitely not. I've seen. I've seen. Uh, I've trained with Sam Cox as well, and I've seen him play. And yeah, I, I met him in the summer as well. And yeah, he, he's. He's still yeah. still playing football, I think, at the yeah. moment. So yeah, has a good job at Spurs as well. So yeah, no, I yeah, say he's coach, coach. I say coach in terms of soft because mate, he could smash his head open. He'll carry on playing, mate. So he's, he's yeah. Tough. <laughs> I say yeah. he's tough. So in terms of like, because you're a striker, if if anyone that's that's listening to you right now, any young strikers, what would you say for them to focus on at the moment? Uh, what what sort what part of their game should they focus on? Whatever you're good at, mm. prove it. Make it, make it the best. So if you're a good finisher, mm. make sure that you're, the, you're, you're the best finisher. If you're fast, make sure you run him behind. So when someone sees you, they're like, yeah, that's his point, which we love. Mm. So if you run him behind, run him behind. Make sure you do that. To a group, make sure you make 25 runs in that game. If you're good at link-up mm. play, make sure link-up play is the best link-up play. Does that make sense? Mm. If you're mm. a tracker, make sure you're, when the ball's in the box, you're, you're 9 out of 10. You're 10 out of 10. Mm. You're lethal. So... Whatever your game is based on, make sure you say. And you know what, as well, I think with me, um, when I entered the pro game, I got shifted that wide a lot. In my career, I've always been shifted that wide because mm. I'm not the coolest, I'm not the shortest, but I can also play that wide. I'd also say if you're a forward and you're a striker, stick striker. I could have scored so many more goals in my career if I had stayed central, if that makes sense. Mm. A lot, most of my career, most of my career games have been played out wide. But for instance, like you said, obviously you've gone to a pro game, a young player. If a manager says, if you're going like the first, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. first game, and I and I agree, with, and I agree with that. But yeah. I made decisions in my career for mm. I, I made more financial decisions in my career than I did. I made more financial decisions decisions than I did position mm. decisions. There was times okay. where I could have signed to a club. And play striker. I knew I was going to play striker because mm-hmm. I knew you, but mm-hmm. I signed for another club with more more money, knowing that mm-hmm. I might be wide. Does that make sense? Okay. So got, okay. Oh, my last year at Dundee United, I got paid up, and I went to Notts County on on, on trial. Obviously, oh, I didn't go on trial. But one of one of my old managers at Spurs, Ricardo Muniz, he got the job at he got the job, there. but he knew I got paid up at Dundee United. So he said, "Look, this is what we can offer you," and it was low for me. I was like, "Raw, like I've never been on that in my life." 
Like, mm, mm. That's, low, that's, that's very, very low. Like, it's, mm. And at the time, I got paid up by Dundee United, so I should have taken that because he knew me. Does that make sense? He knew mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. he was going to play me striker. He already said, this is what I want you to play. But this is the money we've got. This is what we should give to you. And my agent at the time called me up and said, look, you're getting double the money at Hartlepool United, but he wants you to play mm. out five sometimes. Mm. And I was like, hmm. Do I take the P's, double the money, a bit more money, bonuses were nice, or do I go not scouting on less money in League Two? But you know what? He knows what position I'm going to play. He knows me. He's been with me. I chose the money. If that makes sense. So, would you do you so, do you regret anything like in, on that I, side I, of things? Like? I don't. I don't regret anything. Is what it yeah. is. Is what it is. I don't regret anything. But I would say that if I, I would say, I'd think about it more, and maybe I would have yeah. paid less money. I don't regret okay. nothing. Do you know what I mean? I enjoyed yeah, my time yeah, at Hartlepool. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. saying that, I remember playing my first game for Hartlepool that preseason. Mm-hmm. Guess where I played? On the wide? No, down the middle, I think. I played wing back. <laughs> so, 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 do you understand? And I knew from that yeah, game, yeah. it wasn't going to be a good, I knew it wasn't going to be a good season. It wasn't a good season. I played like yeah. 13, 14 games. I played school like two, three goals. So, so in terms of that, in my career, I've made more financial decisions. Like I went to Qatar at one stage. Mm. When I was leaving Spurs, mm. I flew out to Qatar. I went out to Qatar for two, three months. And that was a financial decision because I knew I was going to make a lot of money. But at the end of the day, mm. I, didn't, I didn't find it comfortable and I didn't do it. I ended up coming back to England. So mm. yeah, even even maybe when I left Spurs and I had Cardiff and Leeds, should I sign to them for less money and been a mm. third year scholar and done well and come through the youth team, come through the ranks there? Mm. Or... Nah, I chose the money. I, I chose the money, more money. At his mm. head. But don't worry, it still, got, it still worked out because I ended up scoring loads of goals and guys have done United on a on, on a free yeah. door on, on, on a decent amount of money. So, so do you know what I mean? So, I wouldn't say I regret anything. Obviously, decisions mm. you make, sometimes they go off, sometimes they don't go off. But I would say mm. in my career, I maybe don't make financial decisions sometimes. Sometimes I make footballing decisions. Mm. At the time when I could have went Knox County, I've, I've been paid up a lot of money. So I didn't really need to go. I could have went to Notts County and lived calm on mm. the game because I've been paid up. Mm-hmm. I mean, but I chose not to. But, but it is what it is, man. Yeah, I was going to say, at the end of the day, we've all got bills to pay as well. So yeah, uh, especially if you've got a family, you've got, you got, you got priorities, do you know what I mean? I but in term- I, I, thank you. In, term- in terms of like, uh, advice and how important is it to have the right people around you to, to give you the right advice oh you know it's 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 important but the decision weighs down on yourself mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you can have loads of people telling you and sometimes I don't like having like loads of people you see me if I make a decision I have like two or three close people who I make a decision with because when you have too many people your mind can get melted up get your real mm-hmm. close ones who love you you know the people who love you feel me mm-hmm. say to them look what do you think about this what do you think about that and then I think made the decision. But only you, you're accountable for your decision. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm not mm. one of those who say, oh, I, I blame my agent for telling me to go to, to that club. Of course, my agent mm. might have told me to go to that club or he might have told me to stay. But relatively, mm. your own decision. People, you, <laughs> your friend follows you, your mum follows you, your dad follows you, and then you make, you make the own decision. And that's how you, that's how you live, if you get, if you get what I mean. Would you would you recommend? Obviously, nowadays there's loads of agents and there's loads of money within the, within the game. Would you recommend any young players to to tie up with an agency? Um, sorry, bro. Um, oh no. Worries. Yeah, agents are good. If you have a good agent, they're good. Agents are good, but if you have a bad agent, then I think nah. So obviously. Mm. I don't think you really need to sign to anybody. Mm. If the agent does your deal, he can do your deal without you being signed to him. Does that make sense? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get a loyalty sense in terms, there's people who have been with people since they were like 13, 14. So, mm. of course, you've got to be loyal mm. But I think if someone else can get you something better, do you know what I mean? Always keep the options open. The agent shouldn't be one of them agents where, now nah, you know what, their deal's not going to be done if I don't do it. So, mm-hmm. you've got mm-hmm. to find an agent who is understandable, and can grow, do you know what I mean? Where you can grow with and you have a bigger you have a bigger network where arm. Oh, you know what, this agent has better links with XYZ, you know what, he's gonna do a deal for you. But you know what? I'm still here, Judge I say, and things like that. So I'll say mm. I'll say that. Okay, okay. 
So obviously, you know, a football career is not the longest careers out there in the world. Do you plan on staying within football once you retire? Yeah, I'm currently doing my UFB right now. So okay, okay. I'm, cur I'm currently doing my UFB right now. So that's something which I'm definitely going to do when I finish. When I finish football, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be doing my. I'm doing my badges right now. My UFB. Mm -hmm. After that, I want to try and do my UFA. So, so a hundred. Okay. So coaching is something that you want to get into. Yeah, coaching is one hundred percent. So what I'm wanting to get. I'm currently coaching right now. I coach a local okay. team. I coach a local team down the road for me. So that's something which I'm mm. totally okay. um, I'm definitely going to be doing. So, okay. so yeah, okay, okay. Definitely want to be coaching okay. when I'm up. Um, oh, definitely want to be just to me. just to wrap things up. Any advice you give to young players that have gone through what you've gone through? I'll say to, uh, I'll say that football isn't everything. Yeah, I, I say it in a sense where, as a youth team player and as a, as a youth team player and as a player from the age of five six, we we mm. think that it's football, <laughs> it's football, 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 and after football, it's all life after football. I know so many people who've got who have depression, who have, do you know I mean, drink or, mm. or gambling addicts. Because I think when they've lost football, they think oh, or they've gone down the level, they think oh, but your life doesn't revolve fully around football. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, life, yeah. There's more to life than football. There's family. I remember when my daughter was born, like, after losing the game on a Saturday, I wouldn't talk to my missus and my, and my kids. Mm. Like, like, seriously. Don't yeah, remember, yeah. Don't remember the older I got, it made me understand, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have been like that. Football's football. And at the end of the day, what's more important is your family. Your friends, mm. your loved ones, and sometimes football can have a negative negative effect on people. Because I lose a game on a Saturday, why am I upset? And why has my daughter got to suffer because I mm. lost a game on a Saturday? Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. Why has she yeah, got yeah, yeah, yeah. There's more to life. <laughs> what has she done? What has she done? But like, on a Saturday yeah, night, yeah, she's gonna cuddle and I'm like, oh, she ain't done nothing to deserve that. Or, yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah. You know, do you know what I mean? Oh, what's wrong with you? Why you got attitude? What have I done? Do, mm. do you know what I mean? So. I would say mm. that I would say that, that yeah, there's more to football. Mm. Mm. Like, like me, for example, I've went down levels, mm. but I'm, I feel like I'm happier now than when mm. I was pro. Does that make sense? And yeah, just, yeah, yeah. When I was pro, I felt like that's all I'd done. My, my mind was just pro football, 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 football. Mm. I'm getting lower now, and um, I spend more time with my family, with my kids. Mm. Uh, I, spend, I spend more time with my family I spend more time with my kids I see my parents mm. more I see my, my relatives mm. more I see my cousins more and mm. football's still fine like I love playing football on the Tuesday, Thursday nights I train or on the Saturday matches and then mm. I end up making my own sports coaching company and now we're in schools nurseries and preschools around Essex area and that's growing oh, up so that's, so that's Talk growing talk to us about that so, so that's growing so financially that's growing and you know mm. what Financially, it's it's brilliant, but you know what? What I'm doing in the community and what I'm doing in the area, it's even more brilliant because you're coaching more children. The impact that you're having. More children. So I'm much more happier now than when I was mm. a pro, which is weird. Because people think, you know mm. what? When I was pro, I was, I was on good money, uh, good, good money in my career, and I still have a career now. But you think, oh, you'd be mm. more happy got getting a free deal at Dundee United, you're on this much money, your apartment, mm. you can fish, you can go out. Do you, do you know what I mean? Mm. I, still have that, I still have that that nice car and the money mm. I had when I was a pro footballer now <laughs> yeah but yeah I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm happier <laughs> do you know what I mean I, I do it part time now and do you know what I mean I've got to see my kids see the family so so yeah man this, this, football's not everything and don't I think football's not everything football's mm. everything mm. when I play football when I go onto the field football's everything I will die on that pitch but when I leave that field I'm back to, I'm back to me Mm, mm, yeah, yeah, because it's unfair on your family, like you said, that you're bringing that emotion and it's not unfair to your family. It's, un it's unfair to the world. Yeah, <laughs> true, true. World. It's not unfair to my family. It's unfair to the world. My mum mm. calls me after my game. Of course, I might be upset, and I don't answer my phone. I cut her off the phone. I'm cutting the phone for. I answer the phone. Mum, how you doing? How you doing? Mm. You're right. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for so, sure. So that that like, football is everything in the moment when you're mm. playing doing it and you're working, you're in the gym, you're putting in them hours, which you have to do to make it. It's everything. Mm. When you leave the football ground, 
you got to think of the world. You know what I mean? Think of the mm. world. That's that's all. No, that's true. You can still fall short of your courage. I mean, I know guys who ain't played football and not playing football now, but you know what? They have a very good mm. life and they have a very good career. I know people in football who are unhappy in football. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. do you know what I mean? Just, do you know what I mean? Think about yourself and what can you do to be a better person regardless of just mm. football. Do you know what I mean, can you, mm. can you get a degree? I know footballers, with the, can you get a degree? Can you, mm. can you make a business? Can you, can you do something else? Like, I think I see something the other day about, see Reese Robara, he makes that man of devoir. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. He's got a massive clothing line. And you know what? Mm. He had a really good football career at a very good club. He was, I think it was at Bolton Wanderers. But he's, mm. still, he's successful because he hasn't made it in football. Because he hasn't made it in football in terms of, he has made it, he's obviously played in the league. Mm. He's successful. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He just told his success so, out of football. Do, do, do you know what I'm trying to say? So, so yeah, anybody youngster or any player playing, do you know what I mean? You can still be a success and you can still work hard, do you know what I mean? Don't just think no, your life really. is about football because, do you know what I mean? There's more to life than, than, than football. You should see what's going on in the world today. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. This is just a prime example exactly what you're just no, saying. So, so, yeah, man. Yeah. That's, that's what I would say as well, man. No, for sure. So, anyone anyone that, that um can can get in contact with you, where can they find you? What's your socials? What's your show socials? Oh, what's my what's my what's my, what's my what's my let me you know what I mean. Let me let me check my. I don't know what my name is. <laughs> Kudos underscore eleven. K U D U S eleven. That's my Instagram. And and um, your sports company? Do you have one for that? I love sports coaching limited. So if anybody wants to okay. get their, anything in that, do you want me to hit me up? Sure, sure. Yeah, we'll leave it. We'll leave it in the description anyway. But thank you, Kudos, again. Thanks for your time. Um, and I'm sure anyone that's listening to this and any young players that are listening to this will be inspired with the journey and 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 can learn from it.